You are tuning in to Living Mentally Well with Kevin Hines. Follow us as we interview some of the greatest, most influential minds and public figures in the fields of suicide prevention, entertainment, activism, mental and behavioral health. We welcome you to listen, learn, watch, and enjoy. This is Brian Atkinson, and I'm the Suicide Prevention Coordinator for Veteran Affairs for the East Bay area. So that's everything from Oakland to Fairfield. And um, basically my, my job, there's three aspects to my job. Uh, the first aspect would be um, uh, consultation. So providers come to me as a subject matter expert in suicide, and then I consult with them on veterans that may be at high risk. Um, the second aspect of my job is outreach. So that's when I come and do interviews like this or talks with Dr. Collins. And then the third aspect of my role is a research. So um, the VA right now is doing a really exhaustive suicide prevention project um, so that we can actually study suicide a little bit and try to find some interventions that actually work. Mm -hmm. And um, so anytime there is a suicide within VA, we do a real comprehensive, what we call behavioral autopsy. Mm -hmm. We look at demographic information, protective factors, mm -hmm. risk factors, compile all this kind of stuff, send it off to some researchers in Canandaigua, New York, and they're coming back with us with hopefully some, some more effective interventions in the area of suicide. Because it's still rel a relatively rare event, even though it's the 10th leading cause of death in the United States, it's still, it's still a rare event and a difficult one to study. So. Hi, my name is Bill Collins, and I am a licensed clinical psychologist, and I am a home-based primary care psychologist and as part of Northern California Healthcare System in the Department of Veteran Affairs. And so um, you're sitting in one of my offices. My, re my real office is actually a car because I drive all over, so I have a big geographic area that I cover. Yeah. And so I've been with the Department of Veteran Affairs. Um, I did my internship with the Department of Veteran Affairs in 1999, and I have been in, in the VA in some capacity since then. And home-based primary care has, our home-based primary care that I'm at, we just celebrated our 30th year. Oh, wow. And about nine plus years ago, the Department of Veteran Affairs said that all primary care, VAY, has to have a behavioral health person embedded in it. And so that also included home-based primary care. And so I had been in home-based primary care, would have been it would be eight years this past October. So that's very exciting. Well, thank you. And I was just driving to work one day, and I heard that 18 veterans a day were dying by suicide. I thought that was a terrible statistic, um, and I wanted to try to do something about it. And I felt like I kind of mastered my job in corrections, and it was time for me to move on. So um, I started to apply for positions uh, in the VA that were suicide prevention coordinator positions or related to SPC positions, and I was blessed enough to find a job out here in beautiful Northern California. So that was lucky. But um, I just wanted to make a difference. I just wanted to, 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 to change that statistic. Unfortunately, since then, we found out that it's 22 veterans a day that are dying by suicide and not just 18. So, um, so the numbers are high, but um, I, I feel like we're trying to make a difference. So I think Bill and I do, so. Well, as I mentioned earlier, I actually uh, did my internship in, in the VA in Martinez, California, North California Health System, and so I felt very honored that I was able to, to get an a, a, um, internship with the VA. I was in the, um, one of the branches of the military many years ago, and I feel that working with veterans is a really important um, part of me. I've dedicated my life to take care of veterans, and so I think year after year, I, you know, I've worked with World War II veterans, Korean War veterans, Vietnam era veterans, and, um, and now some of the young veterans from OAF, OEF, ond which are post-9-11 veterans, and the Gulf War veterans. And so for, for me, um, it really gets me up early in the morning, I'm raring to go, and um, I would also say that it, it's motivated me because I have um, uh, lost a veteran to suicide, and so that is really, um, um, it, it fires me up to keep me going. Mm -hmm. I, I think that VA resources in general are very affordable, um, especially if you're a service-connected veteran. I think that the majority of your mental health visits are actually free. 
So, um, so the resources are there. It's just kind of connecting the veterans to those resources that's difficult. One of the best ways that veterans can um, get uh, the mental health treatment they need is by calling the Veterans Crisis Line number, which is uh, 1-800-273-8255. What's and that number again? It's 1-800-273-8255. And then you want to press 1, yes, press 1 to get our responders that are in Canandaigua, New York. So um, the, that number is actually the National Crisis Line number. Anyone can call that number, and if they just call the number, they're gonna be connected with a crisis line in their particular area. So if you were in Contra Costa County, you call that number, you'd be connected with the Contra Costa County crisis line. If you call that number and you hit one, you get connected with our Canandaigua responders. And so, and after our Canandaigua responders interact with you and they have the crisis response, um, what happens is all those calls are filtered back to a suicide prevention coordinator. And then we follow up on those calls and get those veterans engaged in mental health treatment. So that's a really easy, accessible way that veterans can get the care they need. And, and as important is that any provider as well, or family member who's working with a veteran anywhere in the country who has a specific concern about a veteran with suicide can also call that number, press one for veteran, and then in fact they're able to, to get services. What I found for myself is that um, just the awareness of that becomes really important. And I can just also say from personal experience, having um, a veteran who died by suicide, that was a highly stressful event for me as a provider, and I spent a lot of time um, kind of questioning myself at first, but then I looked at the literature, I did the assessments, I recognized I'm where I need to be, and I spent a lot of time hanging out with my little, little Goto Romagnolo Rico. <laughs> so this is Rico. He is a Lagotto Romagnolo. He is an Italian water retriever, and my wonderful partner describes him as her best birthday present ever. And I laugh and say, well, it could a trip to Italy. So um, he's been a lot of fun for us. He gets invited to all these a lot of esoteric foodie events, and we get to go out truffle hunting, and I have some really great friends and, who grow truffle orchards and sell truffle trees. And, and so, I mean, that to me is a really powerful experience too, because it, um, you're out in nature, I'm out in nature, you're grounded. You're around people who are growing things. It's 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 much different. It's having fun and and this is uh, you know we have had these symbiotic relationships with dogs for well over ten thousand plus years. And and sleep. I think you know I used to pride myself in trying to get by with little sleep, but now I'm I've got to get a certain amount of sleep. And so there's a lot of that and exercise. I'm very mindful. I get up in the morning. You know if I sleep in on a weekday, it's going from five fifteen. I sleep into five thirty get up and work out, I try to watch what I, I um, what I eat, and I'm mindful about, you know, and I think being mindful of things is really important. Yeah. And when I have new graduate students, um, the, from, the, from the first day I ask them, what are you doing to take care of yourself? And if you're not, you need to make that as a, just as important plan to learn anything else. Mm -hmm. Make it a priority. Because it, it is a priority. We cannot, as my Sicilian grandmother said, abondanza! You can't give bone marrow. You have to take care of yourself. And so I can't help anybody if I'm not taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. And I have no credibility with anybody if I'm not taking care of myself. Yeah. So I have a dog. Uh, his name is, uh, I, I have two dogs, uh, Winston and Charlie. Uh, Winston's a French bulldog and Charlie's a pug. And a survivor. I spend, Charlie's a survivor. Charlie's a survivor. I, a um, I spend a lot of time with the, uh, them. They're entertaining and fun. I also um, live up, I, have a, I purchased a place up in Mendocino County uh, where I live with my partner. And so um, we, we, we purchased a property that has some gorgeous redwoods on it. So um, I just uh, enjoy being out in nature and we're trying to clean up this piece of property. Um, make it return it to its original state and so um, so I find that kind of work very fulfilling I also make sure that I exercise regularly eat well and, um, and I get a lot of sleep I sleep I sleep a lot you do. I think I would really start with listening and I think that that's really an important part that people need to be heard and they also need to know that we care and so when I go into a veteran's home for the first time I always you know look them dead in the eye and shake their hand and say thank you for this, your service and no one's been the first, you know, if I'm the first person to thank you for your service today. And I have many veterans who start crying, particularly a lot of the Vietnam era veterans, because, you know, bad things happened to them when they came back mm -hmm. from the war. 
And so I think part of it is just recognizing that you know we care about you. You know, the VA isn't just some big organization made of people. So I just I agree with what Bill said is that listening is the first and most important step. Um, I think a lot of times when people let us know that they're suicidal, there's this rush to fix it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we have to be able to kind of sit there in that uh, ambivalence that the other person is feeling about whether or not they want to take their life and do our best to point out the reasons that they have for living while kind of diminishing the reasons that they have for dying. And so um, as a provider, I think Bill would definitely agree with me that um, it can be very uncomfortable to sit there and listen to someone rationalize whether or, whether or not they want to live. But the listening part of that is the most important part. So I would suggest listening. And the second thing that I would suggest that they do is uh, get into care. I would encourage them to, to get into mental health treatment because mental health treatment works. Uh, all the research says it works. Uh, if you're willing to come and participate. so uh, I can just say on a personal note that this um, holds some meaning for me. And I know the Department of Veteran Affairs were very interested in outreach to veterans and others that were about suicide. And we really want to give away everything that we know to, to help other people. That's our mission. And I can just say for myself that this is kind of a, a circle coming backwards, coming, ba coming back, because I had a veteran three years, I think probably this month, who, who unfortunately died by suicide. And I had uh, have an online system that I used to get movies, and I had ordered one probably months before, and all of a sudden it showed up on my doorstep literally two or three days after I had found out that this veteran committed suicide, and it was The Bridge. And I remember looking at that and going, ooh, and I almost just sent it back, and I let it put it down by my TV and I let it sit there and weeks went by, months went by, probably three months later I finally picked it up and really was just prepared to kind of white knuckle through it. And I don't know if I would call it curative, but it was very helpful for me personally. And seeing, you know, Kevin be willing to talk about his his own life and, you know, what had happened for him in that moment and realizing he wanted to live, that was really helpful for me. And so I'm glad it's a way of being able to give back as well because I've worked with people over the years who are, feel suicidal every day. Some days they feel more and so I always say, hey, just take my hand. We'll, we'll work this out together to help you. So I just want to say thank you for this opportunity. I think it's really great. I'm gonna, I think I can speak for both Brian and for the Department of Veteran Affairs. We very much appreciate this and for me, this is a full circle part. So I appreciate Thanks. that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. This has been Living Mentally Well with Kevin Hines, brought to you by 17th and Montgomery Productions. Thank you for tuning in. Subscribe below and let us know the thoughts you have in the comment section.